Hello everyone, today we'll be doing some ranked draft. The set is M19. Let's see what we get here. We have a very bad rare. And so let's see what else is in the pack. We got Angel of Dawn, Vigilant Baylon. I guess that's pretty much all that I would consider first picking here. I'm gonna go with Angel of Dawn because I kind of prefer white to green in this set. So yeah, let's see. Hmm. Now this is a very powerful gold card. And what else is there? There is Spark Tongue Dragon Strangling Spores as well. Hmm. Okay. I think I can go with Strangling Spores here. Hmm. So, Red Green Seeker is one of the best cards in the set. Really grindy new value. I think I'm gonna go for that, especially since there isn't much in our colors. The o the other good cards are pretty much Hudson Scatter, maybe Goblin Instigator over Lightning Mare. And yeah, and we'll move on from there. Uh, now we have Poison Tip Archer, which actually overlaps a little bit with what we have. And that's kind of it. Anticipate is playable, Colossal Dreadmaw is okay. But if I'm going green, I'm taking Poison Tip Archer. Um, yeah, green seems to be open as we get past yet another Colossal Dreadmaw. So I'm gonna gladly take the Dreadmaw here. It's a good card. Uh, the format. Some decks, like Boros, can be a little bit fast for me to want multiple Colossal Dread Moths, but it's very powerful. Very efficient card for this set. Here I'm just taking the Wolves. Another Dread Maw, probably. There's the Neonate. The, I'm just gonna take the Dread Maw. Hmm, Highland Game is okay. Mind Rod is okay. I'm gonna go with Highland Game. Mm, Talons of Wildwood and Highland Game. Also a land, which could help me splash Angel of Dawn. Not exactly a card I would be normally willing to splash, but we'll see what comes of it. Better than Highland Game, which is mostly filler. And speaking of filler... Here we have the choice between the Basilisk and the Corpse. Let's take the Basilisk. It's kind of good against some decks. And now, probably Bristling Boar over Higher Blade. We're not. We're also not particularly committed to black at all. At this point, we're mostly green. And we'll see how the that draft progresses from there. Uh, Dragon's Horde is okay. It's a little bit better than a Mana Lift. Yeah, not a card I'm, I'm happy to first pick, so... Declare Dominance is a lot better. It just wins you the game on mid-range battles. Also pairs well with Daggerback Basilisk and the Poison Tip Ar Archer, so... Very good card to pick up here. And yeah. Oh. oh. Okay, Magic Arena. Almost died on me here. So here we have a bomb rare in the color that we're a hundred percent not in. I mean, I don't have any. I don't even have sideboard for it. But the thing is, in our actual colors, there also isn't much. So let's take Lathless here, mostly as speculation. But I don't really see us pivot. Pivoting towards red. Then we have the Bugler, Strangling Spores, and Giant Spider. All pretty good cards. We we'll already have some some Flyers insurance, so I'm just gonna take a removal here. Uh, so we're we're running a little bit deeper into Golgari now. Um, we have. Now we'll probably sub in a, a 4 drop for the, a worse 4 drop, so Skeleton Archer or the Boar over a 2 headed zombie, probably. Taking Skeleton Archer here. They're both pretty close. Uh, here, 
I'm gonna, just gonna take Lich's Caress, great removal spell, even gets you some life. Now we have Regal Blood Lord. We don't have ways to trigger it too much, like Highland game, and yeah, pretty much it. So unless our mana base turns out to be really good, not really worth the splash. So it's between the Blood Lord and the Walking Corpse. Hmm. I'm just gonna take Walking Corpse. There's just not a good chance that I splash for the Blood Lord. Uh, here, Hired Blaze is some nice little curve filler. With the Colossal Dresmos, we have. I'm not too be happy to be picking up Bog Stomper here. I'd rather take Greenwood Sentinel. Hired Blade over Mind Rot. I guess I can do some stuff with Abnormal Endurance. There isn't much that it pairs with, but... Also not a card I typically play in this format. Uh, here, I'm just gonna take this because it's an uncommon. No chance of playing it, really. Take a white... Take a white card. Green card. And yeah, that's kind of the end of pack two. Let's see what we open up here. Um, we have second declare dominance, and gore claw, and lich's caress. All of these very powerful cards. Very, very powerful cards. I think I'm just gonna take the gore claw here. Mm, second gore claw. If only I knew. Well, I think I'm still taking the second Gore Claw. Druid of the Cow could actually be better. But Gore Claw is very, very good. Also plays where Declare Dominance. And our four curve is just so crowded. Am I supposed to take Diamond Mare here? I already have one Lich's Caress, two Strangling Spores. I think I'll take the third still. Now, what do we have? I guess Colossal Dreadmaw, maybe. Mm. Yeah, Nightmare's Thirst, not too good in this deck. So, let's just take the... Oh, there's also the Basilisk here. Where's the Basilisk we had? Oh, let's put it back. Um, I think second Basilisk over... Third Dreadmaw, I don't know, it's close. We have no ramp. We have kind of like Dryad Green Seeker, which helps us hit land drops. I think I'm just gonna take the Basilisk. It's also a combo with Declare Dominance, so. More of those is nice. Here we have nice four drops. I'm just gonna take the Doom to center. We have enough fives. I mean fours. Ooh, now ramp. Ramp is very good. Um Choice between land and the best list. Definitely picking land here. Uh, Rocks Oracle. Very good, very good. And yeah, the deck shaped up to be pretty okay. Uh, here we have a combat trick. I'm just gonna take Hard Blade. Naturalize, not playing them. Mind Rot. And yeah, that's, this is pretty much done at this point. Ooh, nice, right around the wheel. Root Snare, and Trumpet Blast. And let's see what we're work working with here. So. Yeah, nothing on the sideboard that I would even consider. So let's take a look at what we have. I think we can cut Walking Corpse. We have enough choose. Abnormal Endurance can go. Although Abnormal Endurance plays kind of well with Core Claw. So, I want to prioritize four power creatures that get triggered with Gore Claw. So, cutting Skeleton Archer over the two headed zombie. I like our fives. Just cutting Mind Rod here. Maybe one Hired Blade. 
maybe I should play 18 lands in this deck. I think it's for the best, probably. So, I think I can still cut a 4 here. So, cutting the 2 headed zombie. Anything else? Yeah, 2 headed zombie. The rest. The rest got, got in with some weird misclick. And we have 40 cards. Uh, yeah, I think we can add a land probably. So, cut higher blade. Add one land. Go like this maybe. And yeah, deck, I'm gonna be honest, deck looks very, it looks mostly passable. I guess the most we have going on here is a nice amount of removal to bar claws and declare dominance, even comboing with our death touch creatures, but it's not very exciting stuff. Let's see how we do in the games. Let's see how we do in the games. Seems we're already paired up for round number one. Up against Dr. Toilet. Alright, this hand is excellent. Drive Green Seeker on two. Or maybe Child of the Night, just to add a bit more pressure. And yeah, things look okay here on our front. Daybreak Chaplain, sure. Well, now Child of the Night can't get through, so just lead with Drive Green Seeker. Set a stop on our upkeep. Mm. Uh, Drive Green Seeker is valuable enough that I don't want to lose it to a bluff. I mean, to a combat wreck, so I don't mind. Not calling the bluff here. So, move to the main phase and just pass having hired blade up. Let's try to just eat up the chaplain. Wow, wow that was a fast game. Wow. Not much to say here. I guess opponent was stuck on two lands and maybe not too happy about um, attacking into our hired blade. Well, I don't know what's going on there. But yeah, we're up 1 0. Right, and we're up to match number two up against E Caveman, I guess. So kind of, kind of a top heavy hand, but we'll keep. As it does have good mana. And now say like we draw three and we could actually hit a pretty good curve. Mind Rod. Mind Rod is a B for us. I guess we can pitch a land and maybe a Dread Maw. I want to preserve the curviness of our hand, so keeping the 4, 5, 6 should work out for us, but yeah. Definitely a painful spot to get Mind Rodded. Hopefully, we don't get a second Mind Rod. Uh, okay, just a walking corpse. And I'm playing Demir. Ooh, Mystic Archaeologist. Very powerful card. Uh, we need to add up the pressure. Uh, so here I have a choice between killing the Archaeologist or 
playing Gorklaw. It's so early enough in the game. If they untap this and draw two cards, I guess they did that. So they found a fifth land that also happens to be blue. Well, now we'll just attack them. See if they go for the double block. They don't. Now once more we have the choice between killing the archaeologist or developing our board. Uh, it's a tough one. I don't think they can take yet another yet another turn just to draw cards. If we play the Dread Maw, they need to answer the Dread Maw. Let's see. Wow. Okay, so they are drawing a lot of cards of the dead archaeologist. Well, let's attack. We can punish double blocks and gore claw. And then it's kind of hard for them to get. I don't know. I don't know. I am worried because they have outvalued us by a ton this game. So let's drop Thornhide Wolves. If we're going for aggression and not and not card advantage, we might as well go all the way. Now they'll probably Lich's Caress Gore Claw, I guess. That is the worst case scenario, but even then we can beat him with Red Maw plus. Oof. Well, we're gonna lose a turn only a turn. Sleep is more this leap is a lot more powerful on attacks than on blocks. So we're only losing one turn worth of attacks and two turns worth of blocks. But yeah, I think we'll set up the Strangling Sports to use it offensively, maybe combine with Trample. It can We can definitely use it to achieve lethal. Let's see. Doom Decenter. And they're dead on board at this point with our three trampling attackers thanks to Goreclaw. I don't think they can prevent themselves from dying. So how much damage is this? This is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They have played a land. Whatever, I'm just gonna block. I mean they're dead anyways. Might as well block here. I mean, they have already played their tap line for turn, so there isn't much that can be done. So we'll attack them for lethal with three huge tramplers. But yeah. I'm not sure if I played correctly. If I should have played Gore Claw or Kill the Archaeologist. I don't know what, what really is the correct play there. Feel free to comment on what you would have done. I mean, it's mostly a, a question of tempo versus value. I went for tempo, just playing an early gore claw, putting max pressure on the board. To match number three up against Yan Li. Uh, Hand's pretty good. Hand's pretty good. Has a 2 3 curve. And if we can curve out into Gore Claw, that should, that should be potent. So let's see how we pair up against our opponent here. They lead with Island. Yeah. Yeah, blue a very co good color in this set. Uh, this set is very much centered around value, removal, and flyers. So having access to divination and some good common flyers tends to really work out. Uh, in my opinion, the best deck in M19 really is Boros, but it really doesn't come together 
all that often because it is the best deck, so people on the table do tend to force it. So blue leads into blue pairs well with pretty much every color of the set. Is it is good, Demir is great, Azorius is great, and whatever combination I'm, I'm, I'm missing is also great. Is that Simic? Yeah, Simic. Simic is great as well. So yeah. Ooh. Well, we have Poison Tip Archer in hand, but let's just lead with Goreclaw. Mentor of Demik is a powerful card, but hopefully we can aggro it. Wow, they're just... Hmm. Interesting. Me Mentor of Demik is a very powerful card. I'm surprised that they'll, they're willing to just write it off so soon here, before getting any card draw out of it. I guess we're just pressuring them a, a bit much. Now we'll just play a... Uh... Well, let's attack first. I'm not gonna bluff attack with the Greenwood Sentinel. Just attack with Goraclaw here. It gets bumped, so it gets through the Artificer. And then we'll play uh, ahead of the curve Dreadmaw. Yep. We see that they can all block it profitably, and yeah, they play a Dreadmaw on turn 5, so yeah, uh, the games have, this game is really, just shows the best that this deck can do, and yeah, with that Yearsmith Guardian, I think we might have Lethal, let's think for a bit, so, we're hitting them for... 12 uh, damage of trample damage. See, they block this and block this. Or I can just play Poison Tip Archer. I think it's kind of just as good. And yeah. Uh, Poison Tip Archer triggers off of the Sentinel. So we might even want to attack with it because if they block like this. I guess we can leave the sentinel back. So they do go for the double block. Maybe I should have gone for the strangling sports play. But I guess whatever happens, or maybe attack with the greenwood sentinel. But I guess it's very hard for them to come to get out of this situation. Take Vengeance. We drop down to 1 with that. And we have them dead with Strangling Spores, actually. Let's see what else can they do here. I'm just going to attack with everything. And if they try to remove Poison Tip Archer, it will kill their creature when he has the game. So yeah, this is lethal right now, so we don't have to do anything, and yep, we win with a lot of insurance. So we go up to 3-0 in this ranked draft. Nice. I'm mostly playing M19, to be honest, because I need gems. Uh, I kind of bum bummed out of a, a sealed league with only two wins, and that really puts you on the red. You. For three wins on sealed, you lose 1,400 gems, so that's pretty rough. You only get 600 on your on your reward, so that will definitely set you back. What happened is I pretty much had a pool with no win condition, so I had a great Azorius deck like Dovin's Acuity. Um, three Lame just binding. The deck was pretty good, but I actually milled myself on three games because I had no way to win the game. I was three cards down from my opponents and just had no way to win. They just played like a couple blocker, air blockers removed a couple, a couple of the only win conditions, and yeah. And there wasn't much to do with the pool. Uh, I would totally be able, willing to splash 
other colors for wind condition, but there there just wasn't. There weren't wind conditions in any colors. No flyers. No ill-gotten inheritance. That deck would have been sick with ill-gotten inheritance. But yeah. I just ended up playing blue white no win counts. Here I think I'm gonna try to trap the Omen Speaker over ramping with Elvish Rejuvenator. Because I'm not exactly ramping into anything. So yeah, see they might have Essence Scatter. Well they don't, so we get a little bit of value here. Very nice. Very nice. Let's attack. Now, if they have a counter spell, I'm sure they would have played it on a higher blade, so let's just play Poison Departure here. One of our best cards. They play Prodigy, sure. I think we'll just follow this up with Gorklaw. Just do it after combat. Okay, no tricks. They just take 5 here. And we'll play Gorklaw. Now our board really looks scary, and we'll follow all this up with uh, Head of the Curve Red Maw. I mean, non Curve Red Maw, it is turn 6. Here, if I attack, I risk losing Poison Tip Archer to a double block, but I think I can live with that and would rather play the Colossal Red Maw on second main phase. Let's see, yeah, they do go for the double block. That's gonna put him down to 10. We obviously get to kill both, of, uh, as we do have a Death Toucher. Play Colossal Red Maw, and I'm pretty sure win this game afterwards. We have two big Tramplers. Yeah. With with a limit of 4 mana, I don't think you can survive this. So nice, we get up to gold tier 1. We're doing pretty well, especially since I haven't been playing too much ranked draft, because sealed is not ranked, and I'm mostly interested in sealed right now. Sealed is great for collection building. I'm already making decent progress into into Revenant Allegiance just by playing Sealed. I'm very excited for when Ranked Draft will be will be Allegiance, but I think that's gonna still take a little bit of time. Maybe next week. I'm not too sure when it when it comes out. Hmm, so this hand is a two lander. I think I'm gonna ship this. You can play in 18 lands and with Greenwood Sentinel. Because it was a, also a blow, the, the spells we had weren't our best. So, yeah, on the play, I think I can keep Child of the Night. Can help us gain a bit of life if we're up against Boros. It pairs well with the Strangling Spores we have. Just play the Child and pass. And they play Daybreak Chaplain. Okay, so the board is already gummed up, we'll just pass. They attack, we cannot block. They play yet another... Um, I'm fine attacking into that. I could also play Strangling Spore since they can get to hit me back for 4. But then that's virtual too. I think I'm just gonna offer the trade first. And then think about strangling spores. I'm just gonna pass. I don't mind these too much. I'd rather save strangling spores for like the Star Crown Stag, Angel of Dawn, more impactful cards. Marauder's Axe, sure. Well, they do equip it under Worst Creature because it has lifelink, so... I'm not happy about it, but I am gonna strangle his force that. Should have done it after attacks, actually. They still make the attack, though. 
So let's just hit him. Keep hitting them with Child of Night. Which helps us stay alive. Hopefully we'll draw into our Dread Maws. We have, I think, two Dread Maws, two Gore Claws, and those are the draws of interest this game. Red Green Seeker also would be pretty nice and would be pretty game winning as well. Red Green Seeker, just a card that accumulates so much value in an M19 game. Hmm. Sure, I'll go for the trade. Kind of arbitrary there. And just pass with Hard Blade up. I'll also go for the trade if they equip the Swift Claw. I would like to have Strangling Spores up, but. I'm fine if they use a combat trick to save it. Actually, they can't, I think. I think the combat trick in this set is Mighty Leap. I actually forgot that it has been a, there has been a while since I played M19 Draft. And here, just pass. This is the last Wrangling Spores I have in hand. Maybe I'll just get hit for 5 here. See what they play second main phase. I think it's... No, but they only have 3 mana. Yeah, let's just kill it. I mean, there aren't too many cards that I'm worried about. Yeah. And then just pass. We're mostly li li living off the top of our deck. Uh, pretty much only 5 cards that we're interested in now. Yeah, they get to hit us for 5, gain a bunch of life. We're presenting a little bit of a quick clock, like we're dead in 3 turns. Clutter Dominance, yeah, definitely not the card for this situation. So, also, the Clutter Dominance doesn't really untap things, so if we're getting beat down, it's not gonna be much help. Not of the Tusk. And yeah, this, we should be dead at this point, I think. Just see what we draw. But I don't think we have Valves here. And Forest is definitely not an app. Uh, kind of unfortunate that this is the first game we see Declare Dominance. We did see it at, a, it at its worst. It's a card that I like a lot. Anyways, I think that puts us to 4-1. 4-1 currently. And move on to the next game. Alright, we're up to game match number six. And we have a very fine head to have on the play. We're up against Artos. Well, we don't do anything until turn three. But then we get maybe Elvish Rejuvenator into Rocks Oracle. Things look okay. Poison Tip Archer is nice. No place. Well, we'll just Elvish Rejuvenator to ramp us into a 5 drop. So only up on forests. Uh, there is wild blanche armor. I forgot what the proper name is, but there is the the armor that gives plus one plus one for each forest you have. That deck's actually pretty okay if you can get two 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 armors and the deck is open. It can be pretty powerful. 
We'll just play our cantripping oracle here and pass turn. Green Seeker, very nice, can help us win the late game. Oh, and so has made has cast no spells. So lots of them line breaker. Enable straight with the rocks on a hole. Land here would be nice. Yeah, we get to play Poison Tip Archer and Dryad Green Seeker. That just makes me less sad about attacking into the line breaker. Yeah. We do make the train and we drain them for one. Johnny Sprite main scare card. I would like to see some removal, like Strangling Spores, things like that. Jump Sprite Mage is a card that can definitely get out of control. I think I'm fine attacking into it with the Poison Tip Archer, that is not a trade I'm, I'm sad to make. Mm -hmm. So, they have to decide on this trade here. They do go for the train. Want to reduce the aggression a little, little bit? Sure. Uh, we'll tap Dry Green Seeker just to see if we can hit an Umptap land so we can play two spells. Well, we don't, so just play Gore Claw and our tap land and pass. Ooh, we also. Oh! I sometimes I forget about the Gore Claw discount. Very powerful. And that enables a pretty powerful card this turn. Uh, we should maybe be done that last turn, I don't know... Yeah, we should have definitely done that last turn instead of Green Seeker plus Poison, plus poison Tip. That move on me. Well, their Hydra is a little bit too small. We'll just attack them with the Tramplers. Um... Probably yeah, they'll go for the trade on the on the Gore Claw. And we will play oh so triggering resolving. We will play Greenwood Sentinel and pass with Hired Blade up. Alicia Bugler. I tend to not hit with that card. Let's see if opponent can get more lucky than me. They do hit something. Runic Armasaur. Yeah, we'll respond to that with Dry Green Seeker, probably for the last time. It's usually not worth to activate it with an Armasaur on the board. And yeah, this game has definitely taken a turn for the worse now. We have lost one Gore Claw, Poison Tip Archer. Our draws now are Declare Dominance, Colossal Dread Mob, things like that. So we'll just pass since we can't really attack through mm -hmm. the Armasaur. Well, that is not until we find Colossal. I mean,. That 5 mana, Declare Dominance, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Uh, they'll pump their creatures, but probably not attack. I wouldn't really risk the Armasaur here. Yeah, they make no attacks. Well, we find Declare Dominance, and they're also at low mana, so I can do it pretty safely. Uh, I, I shouldn't put it on the Bristling Boar, because then it, they can only put one creature on front of it. So I guess the next best thing is, well, I have a choice here. I can put it on Hired Blade to kill Angel of Dawn and Militia Bugler, or I can put it on Greenwood Sentinel to kill the Runic Armasaur. 
I think if I put it on Hired Blade, hit him for 5, 6, 8, put him down to 3 like this, this should probably be enough. And I'm also removing 2 blockers with this play for next turn, so yep. Yeah. Let's see if this works out. So we have to block Hall on Hired Blade, and hopefully we can kill the Angel and the Bugler. And put them at 3 life. There was also the option of putting it on, on which I didn't consider. I could put it on El Elvish Rejuvenator, trade it for the Angel, and hit him for a bit more, put him down to one. I'd rather take down two blockers. Yeah. Let's see what they can do here. Yeah. I don't think they can survive this, right? I think we have them on exact lethal. Um, no, we don't. We really don't. <laughs> My bad. So, we have two damage on the board, so I guess we'll have to wait. So, just play Hornhide Wolves and pass. Not too happy about our situation right now. Real Master, yet another block hitter, another blocker keeping them at a higher life total. And removal spells are lethal at this point, so maybe we'll get lucky we still have three, four removal spells, I believe. I think we have three Strangling Spores and one Lich's Caress. So, we put Talons on their Dino and just pass. We could dig here with the Green Seeker. Uh, dig for lethal. But that would give him a few too many draws. I'd rather just be patient here. Yet another creature. And yet another land. So we'll flip that out and pass. Now that they have open mana, I definitely don't want to tap the Green Seeker. Because I'm guaranteed to give them a draw. And I'm not even guaranteed to get a draw out of it, so not particularly worth it. I'll just play Child of the Nine and Pass. We're up against five five versus six, so yeah. The game has definitely extended itself now. Very ooh, wow, they're going for attacks. Uh, that's kind of brave. So they have five blockers. We have strangling spores. They attack with everything. They block and block, and then trade, chump, trade. I guess we can attack with everything and use this opportunity to get rid of the armasaur. I don't think they're gonna take. Yeah, I don't think that they even can kill the Dryad Green Seeker in this combat, so we'll attack with everything. And they're blocking as expected. So we'll shrink down the Runic Hermosaur, saving the, the Bristling Boar and leaving the Green Seeker with full fully operational. So, yeah, I think that's what makes the most sense. So this is trade, trade, uh, eating mine, eating mine, and trade. Yeah, this is the one that makes the most sense. We'll kill off the Ronic Armasaur and keep our Bristling Boar. I 
It's a pity that the Green Seeker is tapped. But now I think we can use it to get back into this game. Talons of Wildwood on the Falcon. So, okay, they will keep attacking with the Falcon. But that is a slow clock at this point. So I'm sure we'll have enough time to dig into our outs. So we draw land before the draw step. On the draw step, we find one of the cards we were looking for, so the Dread Maw. I'll play the land since they know about it, and play the Dreadmaw. That is good development for us. Novice Knight, sure. And no attacks. To the green seeker on upkeep, drawing doom to center. So, yeah, here I think we attack with only the dread maw. It's just safer in case they have a trick. So, we'll probably trade for a Johnny's Pride Mate, which is good because if they get a single trigger, it would get out of our range. So, we'll play doom to center and pass. Now we get to. Maybe it may be attack of the bristling board. It depends on how this goes. Okay, so we're suiting up novice knight. Well. Oh, winds are attacking. Okay. Well, oh, it has vigilance, right? So, maybe I go for the double block here. Yeah, let's go for the double block. Get a zombie. <coughs> just... I think I'm just gonna draw naturally now and leave the green the green seeker for the end step. It just works out a little bit better. So play the basilisk and pass. Yeah, opponents on green white auras. Classic arch classic M19 archetype. There's the Seder that gets you card draw triggers off of it. Also the druid get that gets you tokens. It's a nice archetype when the uncommons come together. So no attacks. Not not a big surprise. And step activate green seeker. Okay, strangling spores on top. Well, I think we can just play that straight away on the rustling falcon. No response, and then we can just attack with our two twos, prompting a, a trade, uh, obligatory trade if they don't have. A response which I don't think they have. No. Yep, return talents. And we'll attack them with everything. Kill the basilisk can get down to two. And yep. We could have also attack the Green Seeker here, 
That was a little bit overly cautious. Uh, that was probably a nicer line. Oh, they have more auras. Okay. Then... Talons, I guess? Sure. Yeah, if I attack with the Green Seeker, I would have them on lethal right now, so... Yeah. I still kind of like having the activation. It's nice if they played something like a Valiant Knight. Um, shielding myself from that. So we draw Basilisk. So... Play that and pass. So we have one Gore Claw, one Red Maw, and one Spores in the deck, also Lich's Caress. Let's see what's on top. Lich's Caress, okay. And we'll just we'll just go for it. That's lethal. Yeah, it's nice that we got to unlock our Dryad Green Secret on that combat. Just a very good card, gets you very good card advantage. And yeah, definitely a card that I will that I will always high pick and draft. Good value driven card. Yeah, last game ties into about what I think about M19 in particular. I really feel like it's a card advantage oriented format. You really need to prioritize your divinations, things like that, and and ways to win the game as well, because board board stalls are all too frequent in the format. So yeah, just draw cards, remove threats, play your threats, and win the game. It's really a very basic set. And yeah, the only deck that operates a little bit outside this these parameters are are or Boros Boros Agro, which is actually pretty good. Here, since we're getting aggroed out by this Aura Dub creature, we'll play Child of the Night to counteract some of that 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 damage we're taking. Uh, Daggerback Basilisk is a pretty good card to have in hand right now as well. So we can trade with the suited up cat. And yeah, just stack for two. And play our death texture. So yeah, speaking of card advantage, we're threatening a two for one here. So Yeah, that's that stops him from attacking. And we'll just play Gore Claw and hopefully have a pretty powerful next turn. White can't really remove an, un an untapped creature. Actually, there's higher Menser's Cage, but I feel pretty conf I feel pretty confident that we'll have Colossal Red Maw next turn. Way ahead of the curve. Here we'll go for the trade. Sure. And they just pass. Weird. Weird that they didn't do it sooner. So I'm guessing. Maybe I should have played Colossal Red Maw pre attacks, but I don't think there. Yeah, there isn't Gideon's Reproach in this set or anything like that. So I'll just play it like this. If they have Take Vengeance, then they can kill it on their turn, but we already get a lot of value out of it with 5 damage and ramping to Colossal Red Maw. So yeah, do they have Take Vengeance? They, they, they don't, I guess. So yeah, we go up to 6 1, I believe. Very nice. Moving on to match number eight, possibly our last. Mm. 
yeah let's see what we get paired up here in hopefully our last match Right, so it looks like we're all paired up. Up against Sab Cecilia. Sab Cecilia. Uh, yeah. Mm, this hand's okay. Nothing too special. Has a nice curve. A lot of lands. We only need double. No, we have double black spells, but yeah. Good mana, good curve. Not much else to ask. Opponent mulligans to six. So play land and pass. Against Simic. Probably. So let's play Sentinel and pass. Tap them for two. And pass. We have a powerful curve going on. Play Hardblade for play Gore Claw. Dwarven Priest, it, it, stop, it, it stops our, our current attacks, but it's not going to do too much against Scoreclaw. Ooh, Declare Dominance is powerful. So what we want to do with Declare Dominance in hand is just avoid trades as much as possible. So we can maybe build to a big board stall and win off of Declare Dominance. We also have Declare Dominance plus Dagger Back Basilisk, which is a Plague Wind for our opponents. So, yeah, nice little combination. Let's see if they have an answer for Gorklaw. Gore Even if they do, we're still in pretty good shape. It would be kind of annoying to lose Gorklaw to a combat trick, though. Let's see how this works out. We're taking in the, the board position. And it looks like just passing. Yep. They have entered full control, apparently. Because the game doesn't stop on your opponent's upkeep unless you are in full control or you have set a stop. They totally lost. Oh, they want to do it on the draw stamp. Sure. Uh, that is annoying because we don't get to. We miss the accelerated Colossal Dread Maw. So, yeah. Bonnet had a pretty good answer, but we'll still make some pretty impactful plays. Next turn, we actually can play Gorklaw plus Colossal Dread Maw. See, now I, now I know. Now I remember the cost reduction and it's gonna be pretty great uh we just gotta tap correctly because the auto tapper would have oh no i'm just crazy no I can't, we can't do that and since we can't do that we're just gonna go for colossal dread not here i was thinking about core claw plus like the boar riddle something boar Okay, yeah, let's see what they do. If they tap out for a creature, that would be like ideal. Then we can declare dominance the Colossal Red Maw and ju then just kill their whole board. Instead they play Sleep. Uh, once again, Sleep is a very poor defensive card. It's a card that I love, but it needs to go on specific decks. It's mostly uh, top end of a, an aggressive deck. Or top hand of a deck that creates really creates board stalls. Sure, it's a blue card, but I think our deck would really use sleep very well. Just set up two fatties and play sleep and hit opponent twice. When you're on defense, sleep is very very poor. It, it's 
It's kind of like a fog. It plays out almost exactly like a fog. Yeah, now here we're faced... Yeah, I'm... I'm oh, they're, they still have to choose between Gorklaw or Colossal Dreadmaw. Hmm, I would rather they have taken Gorklaw, of course. Well... This is looking like the a turn we can... Uh, yeah, we can declare dominance the Basilisk and wipe their board. I think that's the best play we have available. Because our other option is to just play Poison Tip Archer and pass. Right, because we don't really have... If we attack, we open ourselves to double blocks. Which would turn out poorly for us. So we'll put it all on the Daggerback Basilisk and it can destroy their whole board while... Oh, it also tramples. Yeah, nice. I... So they're taking a lot of damage here and they're also taking 4 trample damage that I wasn't accounting for. So yeah, because it did get the trigger for, from Gora Claw because it was a 5-5 tanks to declare dominance, so... Yeah, we made a nice little Death Touch plus Trample combo, which is that you only need to assign one damage to each blocking creature. And yeah, opponent kind of going to need Cleansing Nova at this point. And another White Source, so... Yep, we finish our League 7-1. Uh, good stuff. M1910 Supreme play a little bit of the same. It's not my favorite format by any measure, but not one I particularly mind playing. And I, I actually prefer M19 to Vixel Undraft. So yeah, there's that. So we get two boosters. And yeah, thanks for, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Be sure to post any like picks or plays that you found interesting or didn't agree with. Especially in picks, I'm, I, I'm always very interested to see what other people's first picks and crucial picks would have been. So yeah, thanks for tuning in, we'll see you next time.